Do your looking. <laughs> hey everyone. And um, so today we're going to do 20 questions with Grandma. So I'm going to be asking Grandma questions. <laughs> she doesn't like to be recorded. No. She's beautiful. I think she's beautiful. And this is for good memories. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So the first question, it, it's kind of, it'll be more for grandparents. But um, I'm not going to ask when. Because it's a little personal, but where were you born? So, Welch, Oklahoma. Welch, Oklahoma. Bradford. Brad. Bradshit. <laughs> Bradshit. <laughs> Started over. No, it's okay. It's okay. What was it? No. Bradshaw Hospital. Brad Bradshaw. You know, I was very small when it happened, so it's difficult for me to remember all of it. Well, I'm pretty sure it'd be. Okay. Can you tell me something about your parents? Like any, like a good, like something good about them that you liked? They were both very hard workers. Mom was very loving and caring. Dad was always a perfectionist as far as keeping mm -hmm. everything neat and in its place. Okay, how many siblings do you have, and where do you fall in line? With I the have siblings? two brothers and two sisters, and I am the middle child. What did you and your siblings do for fun? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we just, when I was real young, um, we lived where there, the house had a deep ditch out in the front along the street that was used for water drainage you know to run to the river we didn't have all these underground pipes and drains mm -hmm. and everything and uh, the ditch was so deep that we could go out and sit at the top and slide down into the water <laughs> and we used to do that a lot and then there were always crawdads my bro oldest brother was always catching those and chasing us around with them oh, but you didn't like that i did not <laughs> at all and um, when we were teens we had in our backyard we had an old booth from a restaurant that had a table and they would all come over and we would sing and just have fun it's a lot different from today's <laughs> it is different it was a much simpler life okay what kind of home did you grow up in uh, one story, uh, we had, well, we did live in a two-story for a while, and mom and dad's bedroom was on the first floor, and my brother had his room, and then there was a l large bedroom and a small one that my sisters, we had. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had moved to a larger home where all three of us girls had to share one bedroom. When we were small, uh, all three of us girls slept in one bed, and um, if one of us would want to turn over, then everyone had to turn over. It was very different than today when everyone feels they have to have their own bed. Their own privacy. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Number six. What was school like for you? I loved school. And uh, when we were in element. When we when I started school, of course there were uh, three of us in school, and then when my sister started, four. Um, when I started in the area that I lived, uh, kindergarten was a private school; you had to pay to attend that. So I never did attend kindergarten. I started um, first grade when I was four years old. And uh, turn, I turned five in November of that year. It's a lot different because I remember going to kindergarten. So mm -hmm. you're, you're lucky you got to go to less classes. No, I think I would have enjoyed it. <laughs> Kids these days don't really enjoy school. <laughs> okay, what's the biggest trouble you ever gotten? The most trouble I've ever got in. Yeah, like the biggest trouble you've ever gotten, like as a kid. Mm -hmm. I would <laughs> say 
you know, my parents were, were Pentecostal and they did not believe in any makeup or any of that type of thing. And I was in the um, third grade and we had had a um, play at school and one of the girl's mother uh, put some makeup and lipstick on so that when I was in the play, I would be like the other children and, you know, had some color to my face. So uh, I tried to clean it off, but did not get it off well. And my dad knew that I had makeup on. He picked us up from school and I got in pretty severe trouble for that. Yeah, but you look beautiful naturally. Look at that. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> She's not like, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> She's a feisty girl. <laughs> okay. Um, next one. What were some of the major world events in your, in your growing up years? The one major event that I remember the most was the shooting of President Kennedy. Um, that occurred on my 14th birthday, I believe it was. I was in um, at school and I had my lunch break and I heard that while I was on my lunch break. And I think that was probably the most memorable for me. What were your favorite least, what were your favorite and the least favorite household chores? <laughs> uh, my least favorite was drying dishes. I hated to dry dishes. My oldest sister always washed dishes and then my young sister would rinse them and I had to dry them and put them away. Of course, there was no dishwasher, automatic dishwasher at that time. My most favorite, <laughs> I don't know that there was a favorite, but, um, you know, we had a chest of drawers that had three drawers in it. And each one of us girls had one drawer, and I like to keep my clean and neat. Or, oh, or and one, thing, <laughs> one thing that was really fun that I did enjoy uh, was doing laundry. And that was um, we had an old ringer style washing machine mm -hmm. in a, we called it the wash house. It was a building that was right behind our house. And I love to put the clothes through the ringer. My mom always worried because she was afraid I would get my fingers caught, which. Oh, well, that's the know, thing where you have like the little, the little handle and it kind of goes through. It goes through, but it was one that would automatically oh. fade it through. You didn't oh. turn a handle to make it work. Oh, okay. So it wasn't that old. <laughs> There may have been people that had that, but then when my youngest brother came along and there were going to be a lot of diapers, mm -hmm. then um, dad got a washer and dryer, an automatic washer and dryer. Yeah. Wasn't disposable diapers. <laughs> what was your first job? My first job was babysitting. I started babysitting when I was nine, ten years old. And then as right. far as Jesus, working, that's, that's young. <laughs> working other places, I started to work at Cooper's Dairy Bar. And I started there when I was 13. And, um, you know, I did car hop. I, so you hopped on cars? <laughs> I hopped from car to car. Oh, gosh. <laughs> and then I worked inside the inside. Uh, it was not an eat-in place. It was simply they would drive up. We would walk out to the car and take their order and then take it back to the window to to be fixed. And then I did work inside, um, you know, in the front area, which was where all of the drinks and the ice cream things were made. And so so like, it wasn't a Sonic. It was Cooper's Dairy Bar. Cooper's Dairy Bar. Because now we have it. It's more of Sonic now. <laughs> um, what did you do for entertainment? Entertainment? Because, I was, you know, kids nowadays do like Xbox or games or... No, there was nothing like that. Well, the internet yeah. wasn't even invented back then. 
I learned to embroidery at a very young age and in the evenings if I had no homework or anything else to do I would embroidery my mom was very what, good what's that embroidery mm -hmm. it's uh, where it's needlework with needle and thread oh, and okay, stitch okay. designs so I learned to do that and was very good at it and did a lot of um, scarves and pillowcases and that type of thing uh, for for mom. Then um, we did a lot of music, a lot of singing. My sister played the piano. My dad had the guitar. My sister also played the the mandolin, and we had um, singing, and so that was a lot of our entertainment. So do talk going back to the um, the needle and thread thing. What was your first thing that you ever made? I don't honestly remember the first thing I ever made. What's the one thing that kind of brings up a memory of what you made? Well, I still have a scarf set that I made, and so you know I remember that. Okay. What did you do after high school? I got married after I graduated from high school and uh, I was still working at Cooper's Dairy Bar. You know, then I was 17 years old and then um, I became pregnant and had my first child. Life, so a lot of this kind so of hit you. Changed. Life just hit you. <laughs> okay. Um, so you said you got, you know, pregnant and everything. So how did you meet your husband or your ex-husband? I, I met Tony uh, when I was working at Cooper's Dairy Bar. I remember the incident, but I don't really remember the person, uh, but he told me about it later. He drove up and I went out to take his order and one of my friends from school was in the car with him. No, I take that back. He was not in the car with him that time. Uh, Tony was by himself. And he just hit me as the type of person that just, you know, kind of flirty, I guess you could say. <laughs> but when I walked up to the car, he asked me my name. And of course, we were very careful not to um, tell people our name, our personal things. And I was just in the mood that I didn't want to deal with someone that was going to go on wanting, wanting to figure out who I was. And so I just told him I didn't have a name. <laughs> Your name was Nameless? <laughs> <laughs> Which was silly, but that's what I told him. And um, when I took in his order back, he said, "What's your name? Um, I don't have a name." He said, "Thank you. I don't. I don't have a name." <laughs> That's what I would do. And so that was the end of that conversation. But then he came out again, and he was with one of my friends from high school. And of course, I carried on a conversation with him, and that's so how we really first got to know each other. <laughs> and I should have ran the other direction. <laughs> what, what did he say about, like the second time you saw him? What did, he, like, did he ever like bring up that situation again? He didn't bring it up then. He broke. He brought that up later after we were dating. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess you do have a name after all. <laughs> I do. Okay. But well, I didn't tell him my name. <laughs> my friend told him my name. <laughs> <laughs> What's one thing you remember about your wedding day? Just nerves. I was so nervous and scared. And I, emotions. I, emotions. I wanted my oldest sister to be my, my maid of honor. And uh, then uh, Debbie, my best friend from high school, was my bridesmaid. And my sister uh, was pregnant with her second child. No, yeah, it would have been her second child. And uh, I did not, she did not want to be in the bridal party. Back then, being pregnant wasn't as popular 
as it is fashion now. wise as it is now. And so she played the piano music for me. Um, okay. This is to you, but it, okay. What was my mom like as a child? Like my mom as a child. Your mom was very, she was very sweet. She didn't fight and argue. Um, she was just a joy. So the opposite of me. <laughs> and the angel gave birth to the devil. <laughs> she, she was very smart and witty. Witty? Mm -hmm. That's an old word. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no offense. Okay. What was the hardest part of being a parent for, for you? Well, I was a single parent for most of my life, and it was very difficult trying to to go to school. I went to college after I had four children, and that was extremely difficult with getting the kids to school and uh, then having homework. It was nothing for me to be up in the middle of the night doing my homework for school. And then after a graduation, working and trying to maintain a home with four children, it was um, it was a challenge. So for anyone who is watching this, who is a single mom and kind of struggling, do you have any advice for them? Uh, just try to keep plugging along and uh, not get discouraged. The outcome will be well worth it. And that's also for single dads too. It's not just moms it's for dads too. Um, okay. What was your favorite part of being a parent? Oh, just the joy of the children, the you know, particularly when they're young, how they just um, show so much love and their energy, they're seeing the world through new eyes and it was just a pleasure. There are some bad parts, very difficult times, but if you look at it overall, it's well worth it. Yeah. Okay. So what was your most favorite vacation you took? My favorite vacation? Let me guess. It's probably Maui, huh? <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, I loved going to Maui. It was so beautiful. And um, for those who don't know where Maui is, it's actually in Hawaii. So continue. <laughs> uh, but uh, I really love, I had an opportunity to also go to, to uh, Austria. I went to Vienna. That was um, just a different world, you know, seeing buildings and, and uh, going through museums that are older than our country. And you read about it in history, but actually being there and seeing things was just awesome. I went to, uh, we had dinner at a restaurant that was uh, at the top of the mountain there at the Swiss Alps where uh, the sound of music, the, that opening scene where she is singing and twirling around. I had an opportunity to be there and see all of that in person. We went through um, the church where the wedding took place. It was just beautiful, beautiful, breathtaking. I remember you telling me, I think it was Austria, I think, but my grandma likes to drink her Diet Coke or, you know, any drink with lots and lots of ice. And I think it was Austria, was it? Um, she asked for ice and they just kind of laugh about it. Primarily, their drinks are room temperature. They don't... Uh, you know, refrigerate or ice them. Some of the homes only have um, a refrigerator that is extremely small, uh, just small enough to hold enough food for one day. They have little mar shopping markets, food markets all over the place. And when you're going home from work, you stop and pick up what you're going to need for dinner, breakfast, whatever. But um, of course, there's exceptions to all of that, but the everyday common folks just don't have a lot of food. 
one thing that I, our tour guide that took us on many of our tours, she was extremely nice. And she told us that one thing that she just loved, um, she said that uh, it's customary that when a woman has to work outside the home to help support the family, when they go home at night, the husband actually uh, washes and rubs her feet. So yeah. I think that's something that <laughs> maybe should be adopted in the United States. <laughs> okay. What are your favorite things to do now? <laughs> <laughs> She's closing the. <laughs> I put on the blinds. I open them real wide, and she's like, "I'm wide." <laughs> the sun was actually bothering my eyes, so I just decided, since she didn't want to close them, that could have worn some like my so many pairs of sunglasses. You couldn't wear one of them. <laughs> okay, so what are your favorite things to do now? Like, so as a kid, you had your favorite things to do, but like now and like you know this is a different type of generation mm -hmm. world i guess you could say what do you like to do now well i would say a lot of the things i like to do now are really things i want to do and would love to do but uh, i love i love spending time with my grandchildren and my children that is number one i'm you know i'm really I enjoy that. I would love to be able to do more traveling. Um, I I enjoy reading. I enjoy sewing, although I haven't done a lot of it lately. But since I'm not working as much, I'm hoping that I can start doing some of that more. Okay, so. Every grandparent wants something to be remembered, you know, by them, you know, whenever they pass away. Mm -hmm. So, like, for all of us, like your whole family, what was one thing you would want us to remember about you? That I love them and I was always there for them. I would never want them to feel like they didn't come first in my life and that I love each of them the same. No one is more important than the other. We all have different relationships because of where they live, uh, the time that we have together, uh, but each one of them is just as important as the next one. And I know a few of the fan members, like my mom, my sister, my brother, and then some of my cousins, they do watch a lot of my YouTube channels, so, and they'll see that. So, um... That was the last question. Thank you for. Oh, I should, I'm going to ask you this one because I really want to know. So, when you look at today's. I'm know, sorry. You said you had X number of questions <laughs> and you could have asked those. <laughs> I'm sorry. But this is more. Okay. This is actually what I'm making up. But, okay. okay. So, when you look at today's, you know, world and then you kind of compare it to you know, when you're younger, what's one thing you're very disappointed about and what's one thing you're really happy about? Well, I'm very disappointed um, the way the United States has become. Uh, you know, as a child, we would hear about war or different acts in other countries, but now here in our United States and in our back door, there is just uh, shootings and killings, uh, drugs, things that really uh, we didn't hear about as when I was a child. Even when I was an adult, uh, young adult, you know, those things were very uncommon. And I always thought of our country as being safe, where we weren't, we didn't have war here. And it's not that we have war here in the United States with other countries, but it's our own people, United States people killing each other. And that is just so disappointing that our nation has sunk so low that um, this is occurring so often. Something that I'm really happy about um, 
It's hard for me to think of that right now. There is good everywhere. With all the natural disasters, we've had several hurricanes, um, fires, different storms, where there's been such destruction here in our state, in our United States. And it makes me proud when I see that there are good people, they pull together to help help their neighbor and to help each other. So that is something that's very, very uplifting to see. Well, guys, that's my grandma. And that's a little bit about her. And hope you enjoyed. And you want to say bye, grandma? Thank you for your attention. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our interview. She's fancy. <laughs> she talked about this fancy way. Um, and goodbye. Bye-bye.